Hello guys, my name is Rose, and this is my story. My mother-in-law Sherry is a vain and shallow woman. It's not like she had always been like this. Her behaviour change happened later in life, or at least that's what my husband Dylan swears. Dylan and Sherry didn't grow up very rich. They lived a moderate life, just the two of them. Dylan's father passed away when he was four. Since then, Sherry was the one who became the breadwinner. They lived a simple life until Dylan found a great job after college. I'm not saying this because he is my husband, but Dylan is a very intelligent and kind man. He got a full ride to medical school and became a doctor. After that, Sherry started to live a luxurious life. Meanwhile, Dylan stayed humble. Do you know why I'm giving you all this backstory? Because I still don't understand how and why Sherry became such a shallow woman. Look, I don't have a job for several reasons that I will mention later, but that doesn't mean I am poor or rely on others for help. Somehow Sherry got that impression of me when we first met. I don't know if it was my clothes or my mannerisms that repelled Sherry. On our first meeting, she said, Dylan, this is the girl you've been racing about. She is so plain and average. Why would you even choose someone like this? Girl, do you even have a job? My name is Rose, Sherry. No, I don't have a job, but just as I thought. So you plan to trap my son and drain all his money. Look, girl, I know women like you. You are nothing but gold diggers and parasites. Don't think that you can fool me. Mum, this is so rude of you. Do you even know what you are saying? Rose is a great girl coming from a great family. You have no right to talk to her like that. Dylan, how can you talk to me like that? I am only trying to look out for you. You can't spoil the name of our family by marrying this classless woman. You have to better your standards. She's not of our social or economic status. That is very clear. This led to Dylan and Sherry having a full-blown fight right in front of me. Dylan was getting pretty mad, so we decided to leave. On our way back home, Dylan apologised for his mother. He said, I'm so sorry, Sherry. My mum doesn't know how to act like a sane person anymore. I know that her words have hurt you. Dylan, it's not your fault, but your mum seems to be a horrible lady. Please don't mind her words, but I don't think I'll ever be comfortable around her. Rose, you know that she's the only parent I have left. We don't have a lot of extended family either. I can't cut her off completely. I'll never push for you to be friends with her, but at least can you be civil around her? I can act respectfully towards your mum, Dylan, but I don't think your mum will be able to do that. Don't worry, Rose. I'll keep her in check. If she escalates her behaviour, we can think about going low contact or something. I love my mum, but I also love you. I won't let her keep harassing you for nothing. I was a little sceptical of how my and Sherry's relationship would be like. Dylan did assure me that he would stand up for me, but somehow I still felt uneasy. Me and Dylan got married three years after we started to date. We had a court wedding because we were short of funds. Why, you may ask? Well, Dylan was sending Sherry a lot of money every month because of her emergencies. Even after getting married, Dylan was giving his mother a big amount every month. It was starting to affect our finances, but I didn't stop him. I always thought that he had the right to help his mum. However, Sherry was becoming a big problem for me. She regularly talked ill about me and gossiped with her friends. I knew that she had been telling everyone what a gold digger I was. I usually ignore these comments, but it was starting to affect my reputation. Sherry also never acted nice to me, despite Dylan's efforts to bring us closer. Sherry was adamant that I was beneath her and didn't deserve her son. Surprisingly, one day Dylan said, Rose, Mum called me today about something. She's hosting a small party and wants to invite you. Are you sure? She wants to invite me? I don't see why she would do that since she hates me. I've talked to her multiple times, Rose. She's promised to be better. I guess that's why she's inviting you to the party. That's strange, Dylan. I wonder where she is getting so much money to party. Just this month, she said that she needed money for car repairs. I guess she managed somehow. It's a small gathering of four people or so, Rose. It won't be very expensive. Mum seems excited about the part, and she wants you there. 
Well, if that's what she wants, I'll go. You know that I don't mind spending time with her. It's just her comments and behavior towards me that's creating problems. It looks like mum is making an effort. Let's see what happens. Just keep an open mind about this. I really want you two to become friends. I highly doubted that Sherry would ever be friends with me. I mean, I can be civil to her and try from my side because I love Dylan. But it didn't seem like Sherry cared anything about Dylan's happiness. Even though I was sceptical, I decided to go to the party. But I had to wait to get details from Sherry about it. Sherry texted me the very next day. I thought that she was going to invite me through these texts. Well, this is what happened instead. Hey, Rose! Dylan may have told you that I've been planning a party recently. Yes, Sherry, Dylan mentioned it to me last week. Are you texting to talk about that? Why else would I text you, Rose? You're no use to me anyway, so I've been planning to go to this five-star hotel in town. Everyone has been raving about it. I promised my friends that I would take them there. This is finally my opportunity. That's nice of you, Sherry. Will there be a lot of people? Yes, of course. You know that I have many friends since I am a wealthy lady. My family has a good name in this town, Rose. I'm going to take 15 people to the party. We're going to have a blast. Sounds like a great plan, Sherry. When do you want me to get there? Who the hell said that you could come? I didn't invite you yet. Guys, I was a little taken aback by this. I mean, Dylan clearly told me that his mum was going to invite me. Apparently, Sherry had said so to him herself. He was genuinely happy for the past week because he saw this as Sherry trying to build a relationship with me. But what Sherry said threw me off completely. In fact, I was really confused as to why she was even telling me about the party if she didn't want to invite me. I said, oh, I assumed I was invited since you told Dylan that I was. I'm a little confused. Dylan can get a little carried away at times, Rose. I'm just informing you that I will be hosting a party. You are not invited. This is a posh place. Me and my friends are very particular about who we take with us. I know I am throwing a party at a five-star hotel, but you dare not come because you are not classy like my family and friends. Okay, Sherry, I got the message loud and clear. Don't worry, since you don't want me to come, I won't. I don't care what Dylan said. If you don't want me to come, I won't. This is your day and I don't want to be where I am not wanted. I'm glad that we cleared that up, Rose. That's all I had to say. Now I need to get back to planning the party. I have a lot to do. You won't understand since you have probably never been to a big party, let alone planned one. After that, I didn't send her any reply. People know me to be patient and kind, but I have my limits like everyone else. Sherry was testing me today. I hated myself for having even a little hope that Sherry would extend an olive branch. Nope. She was just showing off her status and make me feel inferior again. There was no olive branch. I was wrong and felt stupid, but I knew how to preserve my dignity. I wasn't going to curse her out or anything. I had much better things to do. Karma would come for her one day. I knew that for sure. I didn't tell Dylan anything and simply waited for the day of the party to arrive. On the day of the party, Sherry had the girl to send me a nice picture of with her and her friends. They were dressed from head to toe in designer stuff and were busy posting pictures on their social media handles. Sherry sent me the picture to show me how classy her friend circle is. It was downright disgusting. I didn't entertain her with a reply. I went back to work and waited. After about three hours, I got a call from my dad. Now, here is where I should confess something to you guys. My dad is the owner of the hotel that Sherry was going to. Sherry had no idea about that. Three years back, I got a nice inheritance from my grandfather, which I invested in my father's business. So, now, I get a part of the profits from the hotel and the other businesses that my dad owns. I actually come from a pretty well-off family, but I don't like to broadcast that to the world. That's why Sherry didn't know about my background. She also didn't know how expensive a five-star hotel and its restaurant can be. She let her friends order what they wanted without even looking at the menu and its prices. The result? She was left with a $2,000 bill. That was exactly what ruined her and gave me my revenge. My dad called and said, 
Your mother-in-law is at the Hotel Rose. <laughs> she came here with a party and ordered a hell of a lot of stuff from the menu. She racked up a bill of $2,000 with all the food and champagne. Now she's asking for a 50% discount as she's short on cash. What should I do, Rose? I know she is your mother-in-law, but it is a lot of money. My servers are also pissed at them because they were rude and entitled. God, just as I expected. Dad, this woman and her team are absolutely horrible. They have no respect for people and love to make fun of others. You know, she boasted to me about today's party and said that I was not invited. What the hell? Why would she do that to you? That is absolutely ridiculous. Yeah, Dad. She told me about the party to throw it in my face that I wasn't invited to it. She said that I was not classy or rich enough to get an invite. That's funny coming from the woman who doesn't even have the money to pay for her party. You should have seen her arguing that we need to give her a discount. She said that since she got us so much business, she deserves the discount. She went to the restaurant one day and is already claiming that she brings all the business. So typical of Rose. Just listening to this is exhausting. No wonder what you and our poor staff are going through. I know, right? That woman even threatened to leave bad reviews if we didn't oblige. We know better than to get scared of that. I'm going to leave this to you, Rose. Looks like you have the perfect chance to take revenge for what she said to you. That's exactly what I had been thinking, Dad. You know what I have in mind? Make her wash the dishes. Get her team to join as well. Make sure they clean the entire kitchen, the dishes and the floor. Since they insulted our staff as well, let's get them some revenge too. Tell them to stay back and only watch the party clean everything. If my mother-in-law tries anything stupid, you can call the cops on her. My dad laughed at my suggestion and gave me a big thumbs up. He even offered to share pictures of the event when it happened. I really would have loved to see Sherry reap what she has sowed. Dad promised to do as I suggested and hung up. An hour or so later, Dad sent me pictures of Sherry and her friends washing dishes and wiping the floor at our restaurant. Dad also said that when Sherry saw him come out as the restaurant owner, she looked really relieved. She started to tell her party that she knew the owner and they would get out of the situation. She was extremely taken aback when Dad told her to go clean his restaurants. Apparently, she was dumbstruck for a while and started to mutter something. Dad said that since she didn't consider me family, he wasn't considering her family either. It was hilarious! I wish I was there, but I did get some good pictures. After a while, Dylan came home looking pretty pissed off. I could tell that he had heard from Sherry what had happened. I also knew that Sherry must have given him a twisted account of the events that followed. He walked up to me and said, Rose, what is this I'm hearing? Your father made my mum wipe down his restaurant and wash the dishes. She said that you told your dad to do this. What is going on? Sorry about that, Dylan. Dad did what is the usual norm for us in this situation. Your mother went to our restaurant, racked up a $2,000 bill, and then said that she didn't have more than $1,000. She also harassed our staff, and her party has been a nightmare, so I thought only this would be a fitting punishment. Wait a minute, Rose. Mum racked up a $2,000 bill? Who the hell did she take with her? What did they order? She took 15 people with her, Dylan. They ordered a lot of stuff, especially the fancy ones. I thought you knew about this. Mum told me that she is taking four people only, and she told me that she invited you, but you declined. No, Dylan, things didn't happen that way. Your mum did tell me about her party, but she didn't invite me. She did tell me that I didn't deserve an invite for not being classy as her. I can show you the text if you want. What the hell, Rose? Yes, please show me the text, and please ask Vance to send me the bills. I showed Dylan all the texts, and my dad sent him the bills. I also showed him some of the pictures to make him understand how many people Sherry took with her. Dylan got extremely mad when he saw everything. He called Sherry and said, Mom, what the hell is wrong with you? You didn't tell me the full story. You only told me that you were a few dollars short of cash. I told you the truth, Dylan. God, that wicked woman Rose must have given you a different story. I swear, Dylan, she purposely tried to sabotage me. That's why she declined my invitation. Is that so, Mum? Then why did your text to her say that she wasn't invited? And why did you insult my wife by saying that she is not as classy enough for you? No, 
Oh, Dylan, <laughs> it was just um, a harmless joke. What was a harmless joke, Mum? The fact that you are calling your daughter-in-law names while spending thousands of dollars that you took from your son? Does being classy mean you have to rob your family and spend it on friends to look cool? Well, I, I just wanted a small party for me, Dylan. I don't know what the big deal is. You think spending two thousand frickin' dollars on food and drink isn't a big deal? Do you think my money grows on trees? You are insane, Mum. Guess I was wrong to give you money whenever you gave me sob stories about needing it. Well, guess what, Mum? I'm not giving you any frickin' money again. But Dylan, you've been so supporting for me for so long. You can't just stop now. It was a one-time mistake, Dylan. Why are you overreacting? No, Mum. I am not overreacting. This is not a one-time mistake. If you can't even consider my wife as family, I don't want anything to do with you. I always thought that you would change your mind, but you never did. I'm not paying you to insult my wife and call her classes while she sacrifices a lot to support you. This ends now. Dylan, Dylan, please listen to me. I am sorry. Dylan didn't listen to Sherry anymore. He hung up on her and blocked her number. He also apologised to me profusely for being mad at me without knowing the full story. I forgave him, because, well, he did stand up for me. We had a serious discussion about Sherry and jointly decided that she would no longer be in our lives for now. Yes, Dylan is now a rich man, but he knows to stay humble. He found Sherry's behaviour completely unacceptable, especially because it was directed towards me. I agreed with the fact that it was very unfair to me that Sherry treated me like shit. And I was all set to remove her from our life for good. In the next few days, Sherry reached peak madness. She realised that her own actions may have damaged her relationship with her son for good. That sent her into a horrible panic. She showed up at our house and demanded to speak with Dylan. Slowly her demands turned into begging after she was turned away from the door every time. Yes, Sherry worked and earned some money. However, it wasn't enough for the high-end lifestyle that she had gotten used to all these years. Dylan had stopped giving her money entirely. Instead, he invested some of his funds into my dad's business to help him open new hotels and restaurants in the neighbourhood towns. We do plan on taking our hotel business to bigger cities, but we will have to see what the future holds. Since Dylan stopped sending her funds, Sherry had to downgrade her lifestyle a lot. She was struggling to keep the rented condo with her own money and ultimately decided to end her lease. She has now shifted to a small, one-bedroom apartment and doesn't have any money to spend on extras after all the bill payments. How do we know this? She emails us about it, of course. She still downplays her behaviour and acts like we are overreacting. Suffice it to say, she will be out of our lives for a while now. Just a month ago, I found out that I was pregnant. Me and Dylan are overjoyed and busy planning everything before the baby comes. To be honest, I'm glad that my child won't be around shallow people like Sherry anymore. But if the time comes, I will make sure my dear mother-in-law doesn't get to fill my child's head with nonsense for now. Please wish us luck so that we can be good parents to a healthy child.